How smart are you? At the athlete, begin. Would you like to be smarter? I feel like increasing my cortical tissue. I'm David Pogue, and on this episode of Nova Science Now. This is a real brain, a human brain. I'm going to extremes. Talk about a splitting headache. To unlock the secrets behind some of the most impressive brains around. From perhaps the greatest mind of the modern age. There's not one brain that has the same anatomy as Einstein. To a guy who can remember impossibly long lists of numbers. 418-592-597. Okay, that's highly freaky. To one with an amazing head for dates. What day will Christmas fall on in the year 2366? Sunday. Come on! That's nuts! What makes their brains so special? Wait, are you saying that you can tell stuff about a person's brain by the outside? Yes, and in the case of Einstein, one's definitely able to do that. Is genius born or made? <laughs> this is like an outtake from the Star Wars prop department. We're diving under the hood. This slice here comes right across the top of his ears. And revealing new evidence of what it means to be smart. We can now evolve the definition of intelligence. And what you can do to improve your brain power. What does this mean? I'm going to find out how smart can we get. Up next on Nova Science Now. I decide to put this memory technique to the test. So I invite Chester Santos, the 2008 US memory champion, to use it to memorize a list of 60 numbers. This would take me the rest of my life. I could definitely do this in five minutes or less. Go. Okay, I'm done. I got it. You're done? I got it, yeah. Just let me know if I make any mistakes, okay? Just let oh, me know if I make you can mistakes. count on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, four, four, one, eight, one, one, two, zero, nine, seven, five, eight, zero, eight, seven, one, five, nine, two, five, nine, seven. You got them all exactly okay. right. Okay, that's highly freaky. You are going to now it's my turn to learn this ancient memory technique. All right, bring on the list. Chester takes out a list of 40 random words for me to memorize in order. Monkey, iron, rope, kite, house, paper. That's right, I said 40. Bicycle, elephant, computer, sword, necklace, and pizza. <laughs> That, that would take me several hours. You will have this perfectly memorized in 10 or less minutes. All right, I just want to be clear for the record. If I don't, it's his fault. Step one. My lesson begins by walking around my living room, making note of objects I see every day, like my beloved grand piano, my favorite chair, and my kid's guitar. Toys really meant to have these cleaned up. Watering can. Chester tells me to study these objects because we're about to use them to help me remember those 40 words. The globe and the pillars. Now it's on to step two. Imagine that on top of this piano, there is a monkey dancing on that piano. <laughs> but you don't just see the monkey dancing around, maybe you even hear the monkey making monkey noises as it's dancing. Because that's the first word, monkey. So picture that, really imagine that happening. Okay. And this monkey picks up a giant iron. How does this strange technique work? We asked a memory expert to explain. We are visual, we are auditory, we have all these different uh, senses. And the more a single piece of information is locked in through the various senses, the better chance it's retained. So the crazier and more vivid the story, the better. Now, at that chair, see a rope attached to a kite. And the kite's flying around in the air. Just picture that. The guitar is smashing into a house. And you discover that the house is made of paper. Now, all your visuals are very active and, and there's a lot of motion to them. Is that part of it? Exactly. We tend to remember things more if there was something interesting actually happening rather than just a stagnant object that's just right. sitting there. 
So a dancing monkey, a shooting rope, a smashing guitar. Perfect. Further down the list, my tissues are having quite a memorable experience as they get run over by a bicycle with an elephant perched on top. Can you see that? I can. It's Something's great. wrong with me. <laughs> but you will remember this stuff. Yes, sure. I will definitely remember that. Remember that. <laughs> the time has finally come. I don't I'm, have any particular confidence. This is I have a lot of confidence. Beyond the monkey. You. I know I got the monkey. So on the piano, we have monkey and iron. And then next to it was a chair, and that had a rope and kite. And then a guitar, the smashing of the house, paper. Lo and behold, as I mentally traverse the room, That's right. the words That's come pouring out. A river. That's right. Rock. That's correct. Tree. That's right. Cheese. Correct. But then... There's something about the tissues. Uh, I'm sure it had something to do with smashing. Um, there's something violent. Uh, let's see, the tissues... Uh-oh. The tissues were getting run over by... Uh, oh, a, a bicycle you got it. by an elephant. After a close call, I miraculously whizzed through the rest of the list. The necklace and the pizza! Awesome. Great job. That was great. Next year's memory champion, David Pogue. Thank you. Incredible job. I want to know what parts of my brain accomplished this Herculean task. Yeah, so we're not seeing... I asked Dr. Zagzag and Golfinos to show me. So why don't you... <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is what I call a brain knife. Um, so... So, please? This one's going on the resume. Okay, ready? Right there. Oh, man. Oh! And wow! I am very happy to inform you that you have made the most symmetrical cut. And the two hippocampi are right here in front of you. Just below the pointer. The hippocampi are toward the middle of the head, just a few inches in from the ears. These tiny structures help store our short-term memories. So that little thing is our memory? Short-term memory, yes. Wow. So what about these people from memory championships? They translate everything into visual metaphors. So if you think about it, they're attaching extra information and using other parts of the brain, the part that processes language, the part that processes images, and that's how they attach them onto the memory and make it a stronger memory by recruiting other parts of the brain to help. Having a good memory is important. Eat yourself. Eat your man.